Hi, I'm Jack from Fallow, and today we are going to break down a whole venison. So we've got a lovely um, Fallow buck here. Uh, the carcass weight is around uh, 32 kilos, so quite a big, uh, quite a big venison we got here. Um, I'm just going to go through all the different steps of how we break it down and we use it in the restaurant. So to start with, um, I'm just going to remove the neck. Um, and we're just going to take a knife, just going to cut through the meat, kind of just where the neck starts to meet the shoulders. I'm just going to cut through there. So what we do with this is we, um, we save them up every time we do it. We, we go through about three venison a week at the restaurant. So we usually freeze these, save them up, and then when we've got enough, um, braise them down. We make um, quite a lot of really nice like staff venison curries with it and stuff like that. So the next stage uh, we're going to do is we're going to take the shoulders off. Now this is quite a big carcass. So I'm just going to hold it upright. Just follow the natural seam down on the shoulder. round the shoulder blade and off like that. So that's one. The shoulder meat is probably the less desirable cut. I mean, the legs are very, very sought after. The haunch and obviously the saddle is kind of what most people get the venison for. So when you buy the whole carcass, you effectively kind of get the, the, whole, um, the whole front quarter pretty much for free. You make up your money on your on your legs and your saddle. And then with the shoulders, they're really nice sort of kind of like rubbed up and then you can roll them and cook them on the barbecue and smoke them down. We sometimes do that for like a nice special or what m most of the time we tend to do is we tend to debone them out. We mince them, take all the sinews out which we use for the stocks and sauces. And then with the meat, we actually mince it down and then we put um, a ratio into our burgers. I'm just gonna stand the deer on its back and now we are going to uh, look to remove the, the hind quarter, so the two legs. We're going to remove the, uh, the fillets or the tenderloins. Now this is a good size, this is a good size deer, so the fillets in here are a really good size. So the, the fillets, the same as you know, most, most other animals, um, run along the inside of the carcass. Just take a knife and just run it along the bone. And it will slowly start to reveal itself. And as you pull it away, just scrape your knife across the bone, remove it from the top, and it will just really simply remove itself like so. And then I'll just go through that last little bit of skin, and there's the second one. Super, super tender, and very little fat in there at all. To remove the legs, the way we're gonna do it is where the legs, um, the kind of the end of the spine is, kind of goes off into almost a V shape. Gonna try, we're gonna cut through uh, the vertebrae there and that way we'll be able to keep the rumps the, the rump or the chump on the top of the leg so just going to cut down here all the way down to the bone and that way I just have to nick through the vet the spine and then with the saw very very easy goes through there gonna go around the ball joint where the top of the leg meets the pelvis and we're just going to release it like so from that bone so I'm just following the bone round again little cuts going as close into the bone as always as close as you can you want to get as much of that meat off the bone as possible just release it very finely like so and that's one exactly the same on the other side just following it round. And as you make these little cuts, you, the sinews and stuff will, re will reveal themselves. And then you just follow it round. So there's the ball joint. So there we have the pelvis bone, which will roast off for obviously our stocks and our sauces. Make a beautiful venison sauce out of that. And then there we have our two venison haunches. The haunch is just another name for the leg. We've got the rump and the chump at the top. I'm just going to take off the, um, the shanks. Who doesn't love a good venison shank? This one. There we go. 
Lovely venison shank there. We are going to remove the breasts off the, uh, the main body of the venison. Just going to score it with my knife so I know where I want to cut. Like so. Now the venison, this part is quite difficult to saw as there's not much meat on the breast. Like so. So there, again, it looks pretty similar to your sort of your lamb breast or goat breast or however. So there's not much meat on here, but the meat is you know, super delicious once it's braised down. But we will remove the meat off the bones trim it off, take all the sinews out and then that, that'll be delicious. Obviously the mince we use for our burgers, all of the nice lean trim, we'll save all that up and then make a really nice venison um, and red wine and hazelnut uh, sausage arm, which is really great. So now I've got my uh, saddle. So next, obviously off the carcass, there's loads of lovely, lovely bits to trim. So now I'm just gonna take off the, the top of the shoulder Again, just scoring around the meat. So again, this is sort of, and you've got some lovely trim there, which would be great for our sauces and our charcuterie. So all of this meat we'll save up. And then what we'll do is we'll go through, the, we'll go through it all, take out the fat, take out the sinews. So here we've got, just got the top of the shoulder. So again, this is a bit like the neck. Um, not, it's all good meat, but it kind of needs, it needs a bit of love. It needs a bit of braising. If there's any lean meat, we'll kind of take that out and save it for the charcuterie. And any of the bits with the sinews in is what we'll kind of save up for braising down. Throughout the carcass, there's going to be bits of trim, making really nice curries and casseroles and that sort of stuff. Two shanks, top of the shoulders, top of the spine, and we had the neck. So they'll be cooked on the bone, the meat's flaked off. Again, really delicious for kind of stews and curries. Now we're heading into the prime cuts, which will be trimmed up beautifully and then they'll just be served very simply uh, cooked over charcoal. Selection of bones and trim. Obviously, as we break down the other cuts, there'll be a lot more of that, but that will go into our sauces, stocks, breast. We're gonna break them down in a second. So here we have a lovely saddle of venison. Uh, that's what most people probably associate when they know when they've had venison before. So I'm actually gonna leave this on the bone because we're going to age this for a few more days inside the fridge. A bit of beef fat on the, on the, on the edges so the edges don't go too dry. And then this one we're going to age it because we want to get that slightly more mature flavour. Two haunches with the shanks removed. Um, meat for our venison tartar. And we'll also get some really nice big single mussels which we use um, for steaks and also we use on our Sunday roast. Now we're just going to trim up the, uh, the primals. We've got the, uh, the two tenderloins. Most of the time with meat prep, the meat will tell you where you need to cut. You can just pull off the kind of, the bit of meat that's attached to it. So we're just gonna cut that last bit off there. Obviously you wanna take off as, minimum, as little meat as we can. There's a small sinew here at the top of the fillet, which we're just gonna take out. So just gonna take off that little bit like that, and then there, there's our fillet, trimmed up and ready to go. So we've just got a box here. So one of them is for our, Braising, one is for our mince and one is for our trim. We're gonna focus on our saddle. The carcass will tell you where I need to cut. So as you can see, there's a bone here at the top. So I'm just gonna cut straight down the middle, either side of the spine bone, and then just release the loin off the bone like, like that. So I'm just gonna cut down here. And as I cut, Then just gonna, with the, very, with the tip of the knife, just gonna follow the bones round. And it will slowly start to come off the frame. There's the carcass frame. I'm just gonna do exactly the same on the other side.
That's my two loins. This is now just bone, so that's just going to be chopped up. Now I'm just going to trim these up quickly. I can see roughly where I need to come. The meat is just kind of falling apart from that sinew. And that's going to be my loin. And at the top here, just going to slowly release that off the fat on the top. So again, this, this meat here, again, will take off the usable meat, take off the fat, separate it between sinews and usable meat for the charcuterie. So just little by little, just removing that sinew. So we've got all these little bits of sinew here, which again, it feels like quite a lot you're taking off, but you're gonna make this end product so much better. And we're also gonna use all this to enhance the dish by making a beautiful sauce out of it. Here we have the trimmed up loin, which is then being be ready to portion into steaks. So next we're just gonna tackle the, um, the legs or the haunches. First we've got this flap which we took off which is kind of like you can see here, it's kind of slightly detached from the other muscles of the leg. So that's our chump or our rump muscle. So we're just going to take that off first. Like so, so that's the rump. The technique we're going to do now is called seam butchery. So basically right now, obviously you've got your whole leg joint. Now, as you start to remove these sinews, then the muscles are gonna to start to reveal themselves. As you, as you cut here, you can see, look, little sections of meat are gonna reveal where they are. Now, some of them will be tiny and then uh, there will be only little tiny muscles, which will kind of only be broken down for burgers and, and mints and whatnot. But then obviously you have your larger muscles, which are then gonna be our kind of, our main meat for steak. So if you can't, once you start to break it down, it's going to go down to the bone. And then it will really start to open up. Now I've got down there. So it's down to the femur bone. There you see, so now muscles are going to start to just appear. Some of them will be big, some of them will be small. There's one. So there's my main muscle groups. So this one here, one, two, three, four, five, six of them. Now I'm gonna take my individual muscles from the rump, from the haunch. So here I've got a lovely nice bit of meat, very similar to that of a, of a little tenderloin, but it's just come from a different part of the deer. So again, just taking off the little bits of sinew Little bits of fat can stay on, obviously, because that's just, just going to be added flavour. Now, classically, you take the bone out of the haunch and then you could just cut a steak out of it. It would have multiple different muscles inside it and all the different muscles have different textures. So by taking out the individual muscles and cooking them as one muscle, you then get with a much more consistent um, piece of meat. Whereas you might have one which is really tough, one which is really... Um, kind of long and sinewy. By taking them out into these single muscles, we can remove all those sinews and it's a much better uh, eating experience. So again here, here's another muscle. Just gonna remove that sinew off the side.
So this is our breast. So you can see the long rib bone. And all we're gonna do with this is just gonna um, prep it ready for mincing. Following the bones all the way down in one long continuous motion. It's a nice deep red color, nice full of fat. So that'll be your boneless breast of venison. Chop these all up for stocks. Selection of bones there. So then this is our boneless breast of venison. And then most of the rest of this we're going to mince. There's a, a thin layer, we call it the bark, which will just need to be trimmed off a little bit before we dice it up. And then that will go into mincing. You could also roll it up like so, marinate it up and give it a slow roast. But venison's are very lean. It's the leanest meat there is because they're wild. So they're just running around all day. So there you have it really. That's, that's all the uses that we use here at Fallow for, for the venison. Obviously the main, the main objective of getting in the whole beast is just gives you so much versatility as you can see. It means we can have venison on the menu. We can also have the mince. We can have the meat to make our charcuterie as well as having a good surplus of trim and bones to make the sauces to go with those dishes. So it's a lot more cost effective, super sustainable. You know, you're using the whole animal in its entirety, not just buying the loins, um, you know, as a lot of restaurants do, um, which is fine you know, for some of the smaller restaurants, but you know, when you have the space and you have the time to be able to do this, it really is the pinnacle of sort of sustainable cooking.